Welcome back, everyone. Ready for another deep dive? Always. What are we digging into today? Well, this time we're going a little bit old school. We're exploring The Mummy from 1999. The Brendan Fraser one? Oh, I love that movie. Classic. You and everyone else, it's a real fan favorite. And you know, you guys have sent in a ton of really interesting material. Oh, so we've got behind the scenes stuff? Yeah, we've got stories from the set. We've got some interesting casting choices to discuss. We'll even do a little bit of historical myth busting. Sign me up. This is going to be fun. So I think we should just jump right in. One of the things that struck me reading through all this material is just how intense the filming process was. Yeah, I mean, you see these big action adventure movies and you don't always think about what it took to make them. Right, yeah. exactly. It's easy to forget the real life risks involved. Like, did you hear about Brendan Fraser almost getting hanged for real? Whoa, for real, I hadn't heard that. Yeah, during one of the big action sequences. A little too realistic, I guess. I guess that's the price you pay for authenticity though, right? It's a reminder that these actors really put themselves out there for these roles. Talk about dedication. And speaking of actors and roles, did you know Brendan Fraser got this part because of George of the Jungle? Really? I mean, they seem like pretty different movies. I know, right? But apparently, the director was looking for a sort of modern-day Errol Flynn. You know, that kind of swashbuckling hero. Okay, yeah, I can kind of see that. Fraser's got that charm. A little bit clumsy, but still heroic. Exactly. Although it is interesting to think about who else could have played that part. Like, I read that Tom Cruise was considered at one point. Oh, wow. That would have been a completely different vibe, wouldn't it? Totally. Though, you know, Cruise ended up doing the reboot in 2017, so I guess he got his mummy fix eventually. Funny how that works out. <laughs> it is. Okay, ready for a little behind-the-scenes humor? Always. So this one involves Kevin J. O'Connor. You know, Ben I. Oh, Ben I, the guy you love to hate. What'd he do? Well, picture this. There's a scene where he's supposed to be loading a sack of gold onto a camel. Seems simple enough, right? Uh-huh. Except apparently, the camels refused to work with him. Every single one. They just did not like Kevin J. O'Connor. Oh no, wait, really? Yeah. I guess sometimes animal actors have their own opinions about their co-stars. And they're not afraid to show it. I bet that made for some interesting filming days. Definitely, but you know, speaking of dedication to a role, Patricia Velasquez, who played Aung San Suu she was practically naked the entire movie. Oh yeah, just covered in body paint. I can't imagine how long it took to get her ready for each scene. Talk about commitment. Especially in that desert heat, that's next level dedication. No kidding. And speaking of challenges on set, that crazy library scene, you know the one with all the books and statues flying everywhere? Yeah, that was epic. They filmed that whole thing in one take. Can you believe that? Wow, really, one take. It's incredible. The timing, the choreography. Right. It's mind-blowing. And there's more. John Hanna, who played Jonathan. He actually injured his wrist while filming and had to wear a brace. You can even spot it in some scenes if you look closely. Oh, that's interesting. You know, I love those little behind-the-scenes details. It's like a whole other layer to the movie. Right. It makes you appreciate all the work that goes into making it all look so seamless. <laughs> oh. And this one I thought was funny. Jonathan Hyde, who played Evelyn's brother, apparently he had a really tough time keeping a straight face during the locust scene. I mean, I can see why. Being covered in bugs is not exactly conducive to serious acting. Right. Even in a big action-adventure film, there are still moments of pure human silliness. I love that. It reminds you that it's all just people making a movie at the end of the day. Right. Real people with real reactions. Exactly. It makes you wonder if they had to do a lot of extra takes for that scene just to get everyone to stop cracking up. Probably. <laughs> I know, I would have been laughing. But, you know, while we're talking about what happened on set, we should probably touch on the historical side of things, too. Oh, yeah, good point. Because The Mummy definitely plays fast and loose with actual history, right? It does. For example, Imhotep. In the film, he's this big, powerful high priest. But in real life, he wasn't a priest at all. He wasn't. What was he then? He was actually an architect and physician. Yeah. And he lived hundreds of years before the time period shown in the movie. Huh. So they basically just took his name and made up a whole new story around him. Pretty much. Yeah. I guess it makes for a better villain though, right? I guess so. It's not quite as exciting if Imhotep's just, you know, designing pyramids. Not quite the same visual. No. <laughs> okay, but let's move on to some fun trivia. This is one of my favorite parts. Hit me with it. Did you know that Ardiff Bay's tattoos actually have specific meanings? Really? I never knew that. That's cool. Yeah, like the ones on his forehead. Yeah. They represent the Egyptian underworld. And the ones on his chin symbolize truth. So they're not just random designs? Nope. 
they're actually significant symbols for the Vedjai, you know, the protectors of the ancient secrets. That's a really neat detail. I like how they put that much thought into it. it makes it feel more authentic somehow. Right, like they really built a whole world. Speaking of which, remember Benny's line, think of my children? Oh yeah, that's such a classic Benny moment. Totally. And you know what? That line wasn't even in the script. Kevin J. O'Connor just improvised it on the spot. No way. That's awesome. I love those little unplanned moments that end up being so memorable. They really do add something special, don't they? Yeah. Okay, here's another one that I thought was pretty cool. The hieroglyphics on Imhotep's sarcophagus. They're actually accurate translations. Get out! No way! Yeah, they spell out, he who shall not be named. That's fantastic. I mean, who would even know? Right. But I think it's cool that they bothered to do it right, even if most people wouldn't even notice. Okay, last one for now. The hailstorm scene in Cairo. Do you remember that? Yeah, that was a crazy scene. Any guesses what they used to create the hail? Hmm, no idea. Rain machines or something. Nope, it was dyed dog food. Wait, what? Dyed dog food? Are you serious? Dead serious. Talk about thinking outside the box. That's incredible. I yeah. guess when you're making a movie, you got to get creative sometimes. Exactly. So the next time you're munching on kibble, just imagine it raining down on Brendan Fraser and Rachel Weiss. I think I'll stick to popcorn, but that's a great story. I thought so too. And, you know, speaking of the creative process, did you know that the director originally wanted to make The Mummy a much darker film? Oh, really? Like a With... full-on horror movie? Yeah, that was his original vision. But Universal Studios convinced him to go for a more adventurous, action-packed vibe. Kind of like Indiana Jones. Interesting. So it was a studio decision to make it more family-friendly. Exactly. They wanted to appeal to a wider audience. Yeah. And it definitely worked. The Mummy was a huge hit. It definitely was. It makes you wonder, though, what that darker version would have looked like. I know. Maybe someday we'll get to see that director's cut. Yeah. Okay, back to casting for a sec. You know how Tom Cruise ended up starring in the reboot? Well, before they landed on him, they actually considered Dwayne The Rock Johnson for the role. Whoa! <laughs> the Rock is the mummy. Please. Now, that would have been interesting. He's got that action hero thing going on. But I don't know if I can picture him as Imhotep. I know, right? <laughs> it's fun to imagine how different the movie would have been. Totally. But let's talk about the original Imhotep for a minute. Arnold Vosloo. I heard he had a pretty rough time filming that mummification scene. Oh, yeah. He was wrapped in bandages for like four hours straight. Four hours. Ugh, that sounds awful. Just thinking about the claustrophobia gives me the creeps. And to think all that effort and most of it gets covered up by the CGI in the final film. It's still a cool visual though. Yeah. And this is random, but did you know those plastic dummies they used for the desiccated corpses? The really creepy looking ones. Yeah, those. They're actually the same ones they used in that 80s movie, Life Force. No way. Seriously. Yep. It's like a little horror movie Easter egg. I love that. It's yeah. like those props have their own careers spanning decades in different movies. It's true. They've seen more action than most actors. Speaking of, I just remembered something else. Okay. Both Arnold Vosloo and Oded Fair, who played Ardith Bay, they both went on to play villains in that TV show Charmed. You're kidding. What a coincidence. Well, maybe there's something about being in The Mummy that prepares you for a life of villainy. Or maybe it's just a fun little connection for fans to discover. It's like a secret society of mummy actors turned TV baddies. Exactly. <laughs> but okay, moving on from villains and bad guys, let's talk about Evelyn's cat. Oh yeah, the cute little white one. Yes. So, you know how she doesn't really have a name in the movie? Hmm. Now that you mention it, I don't think she does. I just assumed she was like the cat. Right, but in the novelization of the film, they actually gave her a name. Oh, really? What's her name? Cleo. Cleo. Oh, that's cute. It suits her. It does. Okay, one more visual detail for you. You know that shot of Ardith Bay standing on the mountaintop looking all stoic? Yeah, I remember that shot. They actually used that same footage twice in the film. Really? Huh. I never noticed that. I guess it works though, right? It does. Saves them from having to film the same thing over and over. <sighs> Speaking of clever tricks, there's a funny story about Rick's big jump from the boat. The one where he leaps back on after telling the Guardian to stay put? That's the one. <laughs> so apparently the director totally forgot to write in how that Guardian was supposed to get off the boat. Oh no. So they had to come up with something on the spot. Yep. And that's how they ended up with Rick making that heroic leap. Just a total last minute addition. Wow, that's filmmaking in action. Sometimes the best moments happen by accident. 
so true. And you know, since we're talking about the director, did you know that the 1932 version of The Mummy was the only movie that really scared him as a kid? Really? That's interesting. It makes you wonder if that's where he got the inspiration for his own mummy movie. Oh, for sure. Yeah. I bet those early horror movie experiences definitely shaped his vision. You know, before we wrap up, I just wanted to touch on something we talked about earlier. The whole thing about the director originally wanting a much darker mummy movie. Oh yeah, the almost horror film. I'm still curious about why the studio pushed back on that. Well, you know, Universal Studios really wanted to make sure the film appealed to a wider audience. That's why they went for the more lighthearted, adventurous feel, kind of like Indiana Jones, as we were saying earlier. Right, right. So it was a business decision, basically. Yeah, pretty much. And hey, it worked out. The Mummy was a huge success. True enough. Sometimes those compromises lead to the best outcome. So I guess we can all be thankful that the studio stepped in and steered things in a slightly different direction. Otherwise, who knows what kind of movie we would have ended up with. Maybe a good one, maybe not. But either way, it wouldn't be the same mummy that we all know and love. Well, I think we've just about emptied this tomb of mummy knowledge. We had near-death experiences, camel dramas, last-minute rewrites. It seems like making this movie was almost as exciting as the movie itself. It really does. I feel like I learned so much about The Mummy today, stuff I never even knew I wanted to know. And hey, maybe it'll inspire some of our listeners to go back and watch it again with a fresh perspective. That's what we like to hear. Because remember, every movie has a story behind the story. So next time you're watching your favorite film, just think about all the little details, all the accidents, all the things that had to come together to make it happen. It really has a whole new level of appreciation. Absolutely, because filmmaking is a magical, but also kind of chaotic process. And that's what makes it so fascinating. Thanks for joining us on this deep dive, everyone. 